Assalamu alaikum, fourth year students. Today we are going to talk about. Today we are going to talk about thalassemias. Assalamu alaikum fourth year students. Today we are going to discuss about the thalassemias. In the previous lecture, we had gone through another important hemolytic hereditary uh, disease, which was having problem with the red cell membrane, hereditary spherocytosis, and in, in which the membrane proteins, spectrin, and carrying band 3.2, band 4, these were uh, deficient or they were defective. So that led to the change in the shape of the red cell that they had become spherocytic and they were responsible for extra corpuscular hemolysis within the spleen because of this shape change. I welcome you in the beginning of this holy month of Ramadan. Allah has blessed us with this month. Many people who were with us during the last Ramadan, they are not here now. And moreover, with this uh, uh, pandemic COVID-19, which is creating a lot of problems. Even today, I have uh, seen in the paper that it has caused 200,000 deaths all over the world and 2,900,000 cases of uh, this coronavirus infection are there all over the world. And we are also having in our Pakistan more than 12,000 12, cases with more than 200 deaths so we have to be very careful we have to take care those necessary precautions taking masks if we have to go outside and we must not go outside without any strong uh, reason and hand washing practice whenever we come in our home or whenever we go out and hand sanitizer and uh, those uh, safe distancing and this all and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he should forgive us from our sins and uh, give us relief from this uh, pandemic. Inshallah, we will be saved. And uh, now we come to our uh, topic, thalassemia. This is very important. The thalassemia syndromes, these are a heterogeneous group of disorders characterized by inherited mutations that decrease synthesis of adult hemoglobin, hemoglobin A, which has got two type of chains, two alpha chains and two beta chains. So this is a group of disorders in which there is inherited mutations and they decrease the synthesis of adult hemoglobin. Now the hemoglobin A there are two alpha chains and they are encoded by identical pair of alpha globin genes on chromosome number 
16. So there is a pair of alpha globin genes on chromosome 16. While the beta chains, two beta chains are encoded by a single beta globin gene on chromosome number 11. So remember that uh, globin, alpha globin genes, they are present on chromosome 16 and they are in pair. That means there are two uh, genes. And for beta globin gene, this is single gene and which is present on chromosome number 11. So these three genes, two alpha globin chain genes on chromosome 16 and one beta globin gene on chromosome number 11. So this is important to have to remember because hemoglobin A is the adult hemoglobin which is 96-97% and then there is hemoglobin A2 is small fraction and very little uh, fraction of hemoglobin F which is present at uh, birth in the newborn and after six months or one year that is almost disappears and these two hemoglobin A and hemoglobin A2 they make the 100% of the hemoglobin. So beta thalassemia is caused by deficient synthesis of beta chains. So very simple to remember beta thalassemia, alpha thalassemia. Beta thalassemia, deficient synthesis of beta chains. Alpha thalassemia, deficient synthesis of alpha chains. The consequences of diminished synthesis of one globin chain, they stem not only from hemoglobin deficiency, but also from a relative excess of the other globin chain, particularly in beta thalassemia. So, simple to understand, that the deficiency of one chain is the defect while what is the normal ratio that there are two alpha chains and they will unite with two beta chains. Now when the so they are equally being produced and you know that there are two uh, genes for alpha chains on chromosome 16 and there is a one gene for beta chain on chromosome number 11. Now there is production of both type of chains, alpha chains, beta chains. Two alpha chains, they will unite with two beta chains. Now, if the production is not good and these beta chains are produced less as compared to alpha chains, so what is going to happen? The alpha chains, they will unite with the beta chains and when beta chains are not there, so the alpha chains are, are, are there, so they are surplus. So they get precipitated because they are not being uh, united with the uh, beta chains. So that is excess. So excess of the uh, alpha chains, they do create a problem and lead to the instability. So thalassemia syndrome, they are endemic in Mediterranean region, Middle East, tropical Africa, Indian subcontinent, Asia. As with sickle cell disease and other common inherited red cell disorders, their prevalence seems to be explained by the protection they afford heterozygous carriers against malaria. So these disorders, they give some protection against malaria. Now beta thalassemia, molecular pathogenesis, the causative mutations, uh, of course this is a mutation inherited uh, disorder. They fall into two categories. One is beta zero mutation, in which there is absent globin synthesis. That is no globin synthesis. And other is beta plus mutations. So where there is reduced beta globin synthesis, that is, but detectable, that there is production of beta chains, but they are uh, less than normal, they are reduced. So basically two, uh, beta zero, there is absent 
beta globin synthesis and beta plus stations, which is uh, reduced beta globin synthesis. Now, sequencing of beta thalassemia genes has shown that there are more than 100 different mutations, and most of them are point mutations. Then there are splicing mutations. These are the most common cause of beta plus thalassemia. Most of these mutations they lie within introns or within exons, fewer of them. So mostly within introns. Some of these mutations they destroy the normal RNA supply junctions and completely prevent the production of normal beta globin messenger RNA. This results in beta zero thalassemia. So these are splicing mutations. There are other uh, types of mutations, promoter region mutations. These mutations reduce transcription by 75 to 80%. Some normal beta globin is synthesized. So these mutations are associated with beta plus thalassemia. Then there are chain terminated mutations. These are the most common type of beta zero thalassemia. The most common type creates a new stop codon within an exon. The second introduces small insertions or deletions that shift the messenger RNA reading frames. That's the frame shift mutations. So these are the different types of mutations which are present in thalassemia. Here you can see this gene. This uh, color indicates where is the defect as transcription defect this one and RNA splicing or translation defect. So there are two uh, mechanisms by which anemia occurs due to impaired beta globin synthesis. The deficit in hemoglobin A synthesis produces under hemoglobinase. So the red cells they are not having a uh, normal quantity of hemoglobin. So they have less amount of hemoglobin. They are under hemoglobinized. And they are hypochromic microstic red cells, just like the cells in iron deficiency anemia, with the subnormal oxygen transport capacity. Of course, when they are under hemoglobinized, when hemoglobin is not complete, is not normal, level. So the oxygen transport capacity is subnormal. This also under, this is understood. Even more important is the diminished survival of the red cells and their precursors. So this is another thing. The survival of the red cells, their lifespan this is reduced. The normal lifespan is 20 days. So which results uh, from the imbalance in alpha and beta globin synthesis. So what are the uh, problems? This uh, red cells having deficiency of hemoglobin A, they are under hemoglobinized, they are hypochromic, they are microcytic, and they have subnormal oxygen transport capacity. And also the survival of the red cell that is diminished. Another effect is that those genes which are surplus and they have not uh, paired with the other C required chain, as you know, two alpha chains, they are going to combine with the two beta chains. So when beta chains are deficient and alpha chains are more, so they form insoluble inclusions or insoluble aggregates and these inclusions they cause different type of side effects such as membrane damage this is the proximal cause of the most red cell pathology so these insoluble aggregates of alpha chains because they are 
surplus in this uh, beta thalassemia so they cause damage to the membrane many red cells are precursors due to membrane damage and they undergo apoptosis that is hemolysis they are uh, cell death apoptosis you know in severe beta thalassemia 70 to 85 percent of the red cell precursors suffer this fate which leads to ineffective erythropoiesis so in the severe case of beta thalassemia 70 to 85 percent of the red cells which are being produced they undergo ineffective erythropoiesis that is these cells they are not good enough to go outside from the marrow in the circulation so they are being destroyed within the bone so this is the ineffective erythropoiesis that the red cells are being produced but they are not effective so those red cells that are released from the marrow they also be in inclusions and membrane damage and they are prone to splenic sequestration and extravascular hemolysis so they are sequestered in the spleen and undergo extravascular hemolysis there is phagocytes which are available over there there is the same uh, issue which was in case of hereditary spherocytosis so in extravascular hemolysis this is the uh, shape uh, shape of the cell or the membrane of the cell that is defective and how you will uh, know Th this will be coming with anemia with splenomegaly because this extravascular hemolysis is going on in the spleen and jaundice so these three are the features of extravascular hemolysis uh, while in case of intravascular hemolysis that is some mechanical defect or this uh, uh, damage to the cells which is occurring or there is some toxic or there is complement fixation antigen antibody reaction complement being fixed and then cells are being broken so that is uh, intravascular hemolysis and intravas in intravascular hemolysis you will found uh, anemia of course and hemoglobinemia that is hemoglobin in the plasma hemoglobinemia hemoglobinemia then hemosiderinuria hemosiderinuria that is in the jaw and jaundice of course so this will be there this is the basic uh, chart if you follow it and you understand it so more than enough to understand uh, the basics of the pathophysiology of thalassemia now this is a normal uh, red blood cell which has got hemoglobin a that is alpha 2 beta 2 this is normal and this is the normal cell the shape like in case and this is from the other end that is the put it on the slide so in uh, beta thalassemia what is happening there is reduced beta globin synthesis with a relative excess of alpha globin alpha globin excess and these are the insulin uh, insoluble alpha globin aggregates are there so this is abnormal erythroblast this is the long bone now what happens these few abnormal red cells they leave and they are having alpha globin aggregates that's the insoluble uh, precipitates normal hemoglobin a the cells are hypochromic and microcytic though they are being sequestered in the spleen extravascular hemolysis destruction of aggregate containing red cells in the spleen so this is going on so this is being destroyed and then this is responsible for anemia and when there is anemia this is tissue hypoxia and then it will uh, initiate erythropoietin production erythropoietin increase 
then it will lead to marrow expansion, skeletal deformities, like that. Now, when this is abnormal erythroblast, so they are being uh, ineffective cause of infective erythropoiesis. That is, most of the erythroblasts which we uh, uh, learn that 70 to 85 percent they are uh, ineffective because of this uh, precipitation of alpha, alpha globin change. So they die out in the marrow and then they are responsible for anemia. Similarly, when this uh, uh, I, uh, hemoglobin production is less, so body uh, tries to uh, absorb more of the iron because iron is the uh, essential element for hemoglobin synthesis and for oxygen transport because hemoglobin is the oxygen transport protein. So when there is increased iron absorption, so this is being stored in the liver and then this can be stored in the heart and it can cause systemic iron overload that is secondary hemochromatosis. So when this is a ineffective erythropoiesis that the cells are dying over there while you saw the fate of the uh, those 15 to 20 percent of the red cells which go out into the circulation which they leave the uh, uh, go into the circulation and then they are carried to the spleen and they are captured over there they are destroyed and they lead into anemia so so from here infective erythropoiesis is another cause of anemia because the required amount of red blood cells they are not available in the uh, circulation and or if they are but they are not providing the uh, proper quantity of oxygen to the tissues as it is required so this anemia now in anemia what you will do you will give the blood transfusion and blood transfusions again that's a source of uh, iron accumulation systemic iron overload and this will reduce uh, tissue hypoxia and the erythropoietin increase will come. Now if you remember when we were discussing iron deficiency anemia, I told you one thing that around one milligram of iron that is being absorbed and the same is being released, uh, excreted from the body. And body has no extra mechanism for uh, excretion of excess iron. So, if you remember, I told you that iron is not a tonic until and unless any patient we know, we confirm that he or she is iron deficient, only then we have to administer iron. It's not like vitamin B blood or any other tonics that we can give and it will be just flushed into the urine. So, this is very important. So when there are blood transfusions, then there is accumulation of iron within the body, so the iron overload. So this tissue hypoxia, the erythropoietin increase, and then there is marrow expansion. The marrow is getting enlarged to compensate and then changes in the skull that will be here and appearance. And then uh, these skeletal uh, deformities are there. So this is the basic, uh, uh, pathophysiology that there is two things if you can remember there is ineffective erythropoiesis within the marrow and there is extravascular hemolysis these are the two uh, major factors which are uh, causing anemia and the mother will bring the child in earlier age that he is failure to thrive that he is not growing his, his growth is are defective is our delayed in severe beta thalassemia ineffective erythropoiesis creates several additional problems for example massive erythroid hyperplasia in the marrow and extensive extramedullary metapoiesis <coughs> what is extramedullary that is other than bone marrow uh, production of the red cells at places other than the bone marrow and the other spleen and liver. 
the expanding mass of red uh, cell precursor <coughs> sorry the expanding mass of red cell precursor erodes the bony cortex impairs bone growth and produces skeletal abnormalities Now the extramedullary hematopoiesis involves liver, spleen, lymph nodes, and in extreme cases, it may cause extra osseous masses in the thorax, abdomen, and pelvis. The metabolically active erythroid progenitors. Now these uh, erythroid progenitors, which are metabolically active, they steal. They take away the nutrients, nutrients from other. Tissues that are already oxygen starved, causing severe cachexia in untreated patients. That is, the patient who is weak, is not uh, healthy, not good enough. Another serious complication is the excessive absorption of dietary iron, which we saw over there, cause of this infective erythropoiesis. There is excessive absorption of dietary iron. So, body is trying to compensate for uh, iron so that more of the uh, erythropoiesis should go on. And ineffective erythropoiesis suppresses the circulating levels of hepcidine, which is a protein which is helpful, uh, has a negative control for iron absorption, a critical negative regulator of iron absorption. So, uh, when the level of hepcidine is low, more of the iron is being absorbed. So low levels of hepcidine and the iron load of repeated blood transfusions, they inevitably lead to severe iron overload unless preventive steps are taken. Secondary injury to parenchymal organs, particularly iron laden liver, often follows and sometimes induces secondary hemo chromatosis because of these uh, reasons. Now the clinical and genetic classification of thalassemia is beta thalassemia, beta thalassemia major, beta thalassemia intermedia and beta thalassemia minor. Now in beta thalassemia major what is the genotype? It's a homozygous beta thalassemia, beta 0, beta 0. You see? Both of the genes, beta 0, beta 0, or beta plus, beta plus, and beta 0 and beta plus. And you know, the beta 0 means absent production of beta chain. And beta plus, there is production of beta chains, but this is reduced, markedly reduced. So the clinical features, they are severe enough requires blood transfusions, mainly point mutations that lead to defects in the transcription, splicing or translation of beta globin messenger RNA. So these are the point mutations which are causing these defects. Now the other is the thalassemia intermediate. That's a, uh, not that severe disease. It's a less, but it is also not a minor, this is in between, so that's it is intermediate. So, what are these types beta uh, 0, beta plus? These are the genes, or beta plus, beta plus, or beta 0, beta, or beta plus, beta. Now, here you can see the difference beta 0, no beta chains, beta plus, there are reduced in the beta chain, and <clears throat> the third variety is beta. This beta, this means that beta chains are normal. Beta chains are normal. Severe but does not require regular blood transfusions. While this uh, beta thalassemia major, this does not go without blood transfusion from right from the early age. And the beta thalassemia minor, heterozygous beta thalassemia, that's beta zero. Beta. This is one gene is uh, totally not producing beta chain, and other is the normal. And here one is 
producing reduced number of beta chains and the other gene is uh, not beta. Now this is asymptomatic with mild or absent anemia. Red cell absorbability that is microcyte versus hypochromia that is there. So these are the three types beta thalassemia major, beta thalassemia intermedia and beta thalassemia uh, minor. Now the major this is most common in Mediterranean countries, Southeast Asia and all this. Now clinically how the child will present. The anemia manifests six to nine months after birth as hemoglobin synthesis switches from hemoglobin F to hemoglobin A. So this is a time when you know there is some percentage of hemoglobin F when child is born. So at six months, nine months, this switches over causing the fetal life. This is the hemoglobin F, which is responsible for supplying oxygen and other nutrients, nutritional elements to the fetus. So in untransfused patients, hemoglobin levels are three to six gram per deciliter. So that's so much low hemoglobin, that's a severe anemia, that's a less than six gram. The hemoglobin, uh, which is uh, less than 12, up to 10, we call it mild. If it is less than nine, we call it moderate. And if it is less than six gram, we call it severe anemia. So less than 12, less than nine, and less than six. Mild, moderate, and severe. The red cells may completely lack hemoglobin A in the beta zero, beta zero genotype or they contain small amounts, beta plus, beta plus, or beta zero, beta plus genotypes, as we have seen. The major red cell hemoglobin is hemoglobin F, which is markedly elevated. Hemoglobin A2 levels are sometimes high, but more often are normal or low. So they are not uh, 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 helpful in the diagnosis because they may be sometimes high and it's up to 3% or 4%. But more often it is normal or low because all of the hemoglobin is hemoglobin F. So in the morphology, as you will find, you will see the uh, size variation. That's the microcyte and the pyrolocytosis, different shapes. Hypochromia, you will find. That's the more central pallor is increased. Microcytosis. Microcytosis. Shape of the cell is reduced and target cells. And basophilic stippling. That's this uh, spores I will show you. And nucleated RBC. That's the red cell with nucleus that's coming from the marrow. See here. These are the hypochromic cells. These are hypochromic cells and microcytosis. See the size of the cell is less. And this is a neutrophil, mature neutrophil with four lobes. And this is hypochromia. Now here you can see the target cell. These are the target cells. So instead of central pallor, there is a central darkness. This is a target cell. This is a feature of this thalassemia and iron deficiency also. Then there is a basophilic stipple. See this one? These are, this is basophilic stipple. This is basophilic stipple. These also, these also have. So these are the uh, peripheral blood smear changes in thalassemia. Now in the lab diagnosis, you will find the important investigation hemoglobin lactophoresis. So in the beta thalassemia major, there is no hemoglobin A. This marked hemoglobin F and hemoglobin A2. So 70 to 80% is hemoglobin F. In beta thalassemia minor, the hemoglobin A is reduced and there is slight increase of hemoglobin A2, that is 4 to 8% increase. 
In peripherals, me, in thalassemia, this hypochromic microcytic anemia, there is marked mesocytosis. There are target cells. There are basophilic stippling, as we see in the previous one. See this one. There is basophilic stippling. There are target cells. Hmm? Hypochromia, microcytosis. No evidences of bone marrow uh, hyperplasia. If you go for the reticulocyte count, reticulocyte count is increased, and normoblasts are also increased in the uh, bone marrow. Iron overload markedly increased citrocytes and citroblasts. These are in the bone marrow, and hemochromatosis, there's uh, iron deposition in the organs of liver. And the heart, cardiac hemochromatosis. Now, uh, the pathogenesis of anemia and thalassemia. Decreased rate of globin synthesis lead to decreased hemoglobin A and hypochromic microcytic anemia. Then, the unpaired alpha globin chains, which were excess, so their aggregation and precipitation. And then there is abnormal erythropoiesis in depth of the young RBCs, that is within the bone marrow, ineffective erythropoiesis. RBC with inoculations, if they happen to go into the circulation initially, they are the source of ineffective erythropoiesis. They are dying out there in the bone marrow. But if those 15%, 20% get access to the circulation, so they are taken up by the spleen because they have got the membrane uh, damage. They have, they have got these inclusions. So there is early cell death. Early cell death, that means lifespan of the dead cells is reduced. This is not 120 days. So leading to severe anemia. Severe anemia, then there is need for transfusions. And then hemocytosis. So this is the pathogenesis. Method massive erythroid hyperplasia, expansion of the red marrow, skull x ray, creo haircut, appearance, facial alteration, enlargement of the face with small jaw, and hemocytosis, hemochromatosis. Massive hepatosplenum jelly. Liver is enlarged, spleen is enlarged, and of course, jaundice is there because this is a hemolytic process. And LDH will also be high. This one, expansion of the bone. This is a hair on end appearance. Can you hear cut appearance? Both phagocytic hyperplasia and extramedullary. Metapoiesis contribute to enlargement of the spleen, which can weigh as much as 1500 grams, that is 1.5 kg, normally 3 to 400. The liver and lymph nodes can also be enlarged by extramedullary hematopoiesis. So, liver is also enlarged, and lymph nodes they are also enlarged because of extramedullary hematopoiesis. Now the hemocytosis and secondary hemochromatosis, two manifestations of iron overload, they occur in almost all patients. The deposited iron often damages the organs, the liver, heart, and the pancreas. This is the explanation of this the bones alterations there is expansion of hematopoietically active marrow so in the bones of the face and skull the marrow budgeting erodes the existing cortical bone new bone formation giving rise to crew cut appearance on neck this one but magali due to extramedullary hematopoiesis is usually present although the blood transfusions they improve the anemia and suppress complications related to excessive erythropoiesis 
they lead to complications of their own. That's the hemocytosis, hemochromatosis, that's organ damage. So you have to give iron chelation therapy to these thalassemia patients so that excess of the iron that is being excreted because there is no natural mechanism for secretion for excessive iron. Cardiac disease resulting from progressive iron overload and secondary hemochromatosis. That's iron overload and plus secondary that is uh, because of already going on inside is an important cause of death, particularly in heavily transfused pressure must be treated with iron chelators to prevent or reduce this complication. Therapy <clears throat> with transfusions and iron chelation survival into the third decade is possible. But the overall outlook remains you see guarded. You have to be very very careful. Bone marrow transplantation is the only therapy offering a cure and is being used increasingly. So bone marrow transplantation is the answer. And prenatal diagnosis is possible molecular analysis of DNA. So prenatal diagnosis during the fetal life, that is important. So what is the message? That a lot of children are being uh, born with thalassemia major. So what we have to do, uh, we have to uh, go for prenatal diagnosis. And before that in developed countries, there is a, a before premarital screening, that if the couples are having a disease like thalassemia, so then there is risk of child. So there, uh, that should be discouraged. And uh, during the fetal life of chorionic villus sampling, we can uh, know that whether this child is uh, thalassemic or with this pregnancy will end up with thalassemic child or not. And then they can decide for uh, abortion or whatever is the, uh, uh, is the uh, couple's desire. So that because we know this, uh, these children they are lifelong on that and bone marrow transplantation is the only therapy and this is not that easy it has got its own complications it has its own problems so this is the thalassemia major i have not touched the beta thalassemia minor on thursday uh, we will uh, discuss the thalassemia minor so you please go through these slides and then we will uh, be discussing uh, this one on 